You know why I'm slapping my hands over here, Mike? No. Because I'm excited. We got a pretty fun show today. I don't know if you know this, but we do have a special guest that's going to pop into the show later. There's today. a guest on this There's podcast? a guest. It's been a while since we've had a guest. I thought we kind of weren't doing guests. I know. And honestly, can I say that like... I, I, with the lack of guests on the show, not to put a, a a a blame on it or anything, but this is your home, mm-hmm. you know, and like I don't want to bring just anybody into your home. You're goddamn right. And uh, this isn't like Joe Beretta's house where I could bring any could bring piece anyone. of shit from VidCon. Literally any anyone yeah. from VidCon can come. Bring to Joe anybody Beretta's. if you don't have a place to stay. You Joe's like Joe's house. <laughs> yeah, Joe will be like washing the floor and like barbecuing up here with his hands yeah. and going like, absolutely. Where do you need to sleep? You want to sleep in my bed next to my wife? But you have to have uh, an artist pass. Yeah. Yeah. You have um, to have a certain badge. <laughs> what color badge do we sleep at Joe's house? Uh, but dude, like, um, <laughs> I don't want to bring just anybody in here. So when I say yeah. that we've got a guest today, it's kind of special. It's special. I can't wait. I can't wait yeah. to see who you've let in my house. Yeah. I think I think we've got John Hartwater. John Hartwater? Is that his name? I know James Hartwater. James. Well, John. I know him as John because he's kind of a friend of mine. Are you talking about the guy who used to make stuff out of seashells? Or are you talking about the country singer? No, no, no. Sorry. John, James, whatever. John Hartwater is like one of the biggest country stars yeah. right now. And you have him? And he is a friend of mine. Oh, from I when? met him way back when at some stupid YouTube thing. Fun. Was he trying to get into the, the content game? You know, he had already kind of like, I didn't know who he was because I don't know shit about the country world. Sure. Uh, you want to give me country gravy? I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> Can you the gravy? Cue Kevin the just gravy. brings out gravy. <laughs> Can you bring the gravy in that I got that I prepared for this bit? Please bring in the country gravy, Kevin. For our Patreon, we're doing Mike tries Steve's country gravy, <laughs> <laughs> and that's chopped up into three imagine? installments. Dude, <laughs> could you imagine if we did that and it was just like? Literally called that. <laughs> Mike tries Steve's country gravy. <laughs> and you click on it, I'm sucking you off. <laughs> it's just me blowing you explicitly. <laughs> like hardcore. And we're like, everyone's disgusting. cool with this because it's behind a paywall. You're cool with this, yeah. right? Well, Controversy. Would you get all freaked out if we blew each other for Patreon content? Maybe then Jose Canseco would unblock me. <laughs> You keep sending them the link, dude. Come on, man. Look at me. Look at me giving my friend my country gravy. Look. Look. Look at me. Come on. Look but how yeah, hard man. I'm trying. Uh, John Hartwater. James. I like calling him. I call him James. He's my friend. Well, so. that's his name. His name is James. Yeah, but his, his I guess, it, you know, John was his net handle. You know, can I tell you, John Cameron, the guy that directed Titanic, yeah. he's a friend of mine, too. Is he? I call him John. Did you meet him at VidCon? <laughs> he brought his son to VidCon. James Cameron Hartwater. He was like, I want to meet Tobuscus. <laughs> and I was like, come here and let me tell you something first. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it. I don't want to do uh, VidCon jokes anymore. Okay, we'll leave those out of the show. <laughs> We'll save those for when we play Fortnite and we're not on a stream or something. I'm out. So, um, yeah. So John Hartwater is here and he's like, and it's really special. (laughs) So he's going to text me and I, and we left, it's okay if I left your door unlocked, right? Yeah. Okay. So he's just going to step right in at some point. And so this is kind of, I'm, it's going to be weird for me to ask you this. I heard that he lives in the city and he rides a horse still. Oh yeah. 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 And that's why I love him because he's like kind of a big uh, goofball. He kind of just does what he wants. He's from the other side. He doesn't of the tracks. know it's funny though. He doesn't know how he is as funny. He doesn't I've never know heard that's funny. An interview with him ever. Oh, it's great. You'll mm. see. It'll be great. Um, but we'll we'll bring him in later, and we're gonna have to uh, since we don't really have a setup here for guests. You're gonna yeah. have to uh, let him sit where you're sitting if that's okay. Okay. He is a special guest. Okay. So. I can go in the other um, room. Thank you me. for being okay with that. Man. Yeah. Um, what's up, man? How you doing? So that'll happen later. Um, 
I before this, I before this, except after C. <laughs> yeah. I went and I played golf today. Okay. And you you got up real early is what I heard. I played golf at 540 in the morning today. And, uh, and I wrote down, I took some notes. First of all, beautiful. This is what it sounds like in my head when While I'm playing, playing golf. golf. Yes. Especially if I go by myself. This it's is just this. This is what it sounds like in the lobby of that place where I get an HJ <laughs> and a nice back <laughs> massage. And there's a small fountain. There is a small fountain. From Brookstone uh-huh. in the corner. And it's che- and it's like disgusting. It's like it needs to be clean. It's never been clean. No. And there's a fish in it? Yeah. So anyway, I'm surprised that place survived Still COVID. In business, yeah. <laughs> well, it's the only one open during the the lockdown. It is important. Um, <laughs> essential work. And uh, so I played uh, golf, and it was great. And I was I was matched up with three strangers, and there was like a twosome friend pair, Whoa, strangers, and an old man, and um. There's a bunch of things we were talking about the golf bubble. There's a bunch of things that people say in the golf bubble that only exist in the <laughs> bubble. It's like whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But yes, it's golf. But it's like a little language that you that only makes sense if you're playing golf with these strangers, mm-hmm. and you don't need to know anything about the stranger to know that you're you're sharing this golf experience. People always say the same types of things in the morning, always. And they talk about how it's too early. It's too hot. It's too hot. They talk about traffic. Why would it? Yeah, I get up this early because no traffic. I love it. <laughs> you could do about an hour on that. Without even ever being at golf. You could probably guess what people talk about. There's this thing called the breakfast ball. Where if you hit what your first fuck? shot real bad, <laughs> all the strangers are like, why don't you take a breakfast ball? And so that ball is lost and they let you take another one and they're like, don't count that. What is why breakfast? Because it's morning. Doesn't that make you kind of hungry when you hear breakfast ball? Yes. And there's a taco truck or a food truck that goes to my golf course and they have the best breakfast burritos I've ever had. I asked him yesterday because I was there yesterday. I was like, are you here a Thursday morning? And he goes, sure I am. And I said at 540 and he goes, absolutely not. So I did not get a breakfast burrito can i can i remedy that with a with a quick idea yeah (laughs) go later (laughs) go later dude i don't want to step on your idea dude yeah (laughs) breakfast balls steve mike tries steve's breakfast balls (laughs) and it's just me blowing you (laughs) <laughs> in the morning in it with this music in the background okay you know those like give me a hand job with my mouth you've seen those like uh those pancake makers uh-huh. where you can make like a pancake ball sure you know i haven't but i i could picture it but the inside of a a pancake ball that's tough to get right oh absolutely i yeah. i'm not i guess i'm I don't want you to poison me as always. I'm I may need to do a little bit of experimentation here because yeah. what I'm thinking, the first thing that pops into my head is you get like biscuit mix. <laughs> Good night. And then you like make a biscuit ball and inside is like bacon and eggs and cheese. And then the outside, you like spray it down with some like avocado oil or something. Okay. And then you put some like Asiago cheese on the top of it. Yeah. And then you stick that into an air fryer. Sure. And the top of it crisps up like a. Like a what? Like one of those. Um, <clears throat> when you break and you can break it, you yeah. break it open, and then inside is one of those. You're just saying it sounds kind of like a what? Well, we put it inside, and then when, when you break it open, you can put your little hands in there and grab them with, like, three or four fingers. Grab them with your hands. And go, yeah. Mm, mm, just rip them right out. And you just, it's a ball <laughs> and a biscuit, and it kind of, kind of. <laughs> you got to eat it fast because it's hot. Yeah, it's real good. Um, but dude. (laughs) 
Would you try a bit a breast a breakfast ball? <sighs> yes, I I'll would be so it. afraid that it would be underdone in the middle. I'll and, figure and it out. Get me sick. I wouldn't give you something that I didn't test myself. And I don't want anything made with your hands. No, I definitely won't. Never use my hands. You need to wear gloves like in the pandemic. I'll never use my hands. <laughs> I will eat breakfast balls made by you your that. feet, though. <laughs> when we were when we became friends, I promised you I'd never use my hands. <laughs> I've never seen your hands. I said, "Hey, man, nice to meet you. Hey, real quick, I'm never gonna use my hands." <laughs> nice to good. meet you. I'm Steve Zaragoza. You found comfort in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you kissed me right on the mouth. I did the first and time you we ever it. met each other. And you, Do you a, remember where we were the first time we hung out? I think. <laughs> It knows just starts bleeding. <laughs> but I don't mention it. Yeah. I'm like spitting it Show out. must go on. <laughs> Broke my teeth. Um is were we at um were we uh we were at That's that right. game show thing? Was it that game show thing? I thought it was I think the it was night. that game show. Oh, okay. I thought it was um Universal Studios. Yeah. Cause I remember going to Moe's Tavern with you. Yeah. That was definitely one of our first, like, hangouts. I think that was, because I think at the game show, I was like, this fucking guy. You think the game show was after that? Yeah, because I think we met in passing. Yeah. And then Tan just was like, you guys would like each other. Yeah. And then when we were at the place, we were like, we might as well hang out, because Tan just said that we would like each other. Yeah. Tan just is a good judge of character. Yeah. Sometimes. And I miss her. Old Tan just is a good judge of character. <laughs> That's the accurate statement. Um, speaking of friendships, Mike, <laughs> I was at a store recently that I love to go to. It's called the Wacko Soapbox Factory or Jesus Art Gallery in Hollywood. And it's it's like two. Was that store married seven times? <laughs> Why does it have so many? Well, names? it took its it took its wife's last name. Sure, <laughs> hyphenated. It's like um, <gasps> it's a it's a really cool novelty shop. With an art gallery inside it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you doing some calculations? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. A, yeah. So it's like a novelty shop that sells like bonkers shit. Like mm -hmm. that dog puppet I showed you yesterday. Loved it. And um, I put it in Kevin's drink. Tons of stuff like that because it was thirsty. <laughs> yeah. And that was the right thing to do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank um, you. I was feeling weird about it. No, you, you did the right it. thing. And I talked to Kevin for about two and a half hours about it last night. <laughs> 10 PM. <laughs> Kevin's giving a big thumbs up. So that definitely happened. Um, yeah. Please. So um, it's a really cool shop. And then inside is an art gallery called the Jesus Gallery or something. And okay. it's like really cool. And it's all this like really strange art. Like one time I went in there and this I've been going in there for like, I don't know, over 10 years. And it's, <laughs> it's where I go to get my uh, Christmas gifts for people because it's like really bonkers shit. Cool. Um, and, uh, one time I went into the art gallery and it was like a cuckoo clock show and every, all these different artists, local artists made like their own cuckoo clocks. I think that that is wonderful. Dude, it was awesome. Some yeah. of them were like beautiful, ornate, amazing. And some of them were like disturbing. Like when it, when the alarm went off, like an eyeball would pop out. Eyeball pops out of labia. Dude. And it looked like a real eye and it's like blood and like body parts are like all over the thing. And like, there's like these fingers hanging from the, like the bottom of it and stuff. Damn. But what time is it? Dude. Fucking time for a new time for a new cock clock. So I, I, I like going in there and shopping. And so I hadn't been in there in a while, actually. Like, I, I was surprised it survived the pandemic. Yeah. I so mean, now you've got two over. banger places open. Yeah. Two little bits of the past. Exactly. And I was, like, really excited about that. And I bought a bunch <clears> of stupid <throat> shit. And I found something that I was like, oh, I got to get this for Mike. I love it. Now, in keeping with the theme of like, or at least one of the running threads of the dynamic banter blanket, which you could buy right now, <laughs> dynamic banter dot clothing. <laughs> Dude, Byron just fell over. What do you, yeah, he's like, no, we can get blankets. No, no. Dude, imagine if the blanket was me and you holding each other in a bed. 
And that was the whole, that's the, it's like those anime pillows where like, they're like, you've seen those? Yeah, yeah, That people are meant to like absolutely hump. Yeah, and there's like a a person. There's a person like laying, like looking all like, ooh, like we should do one like that. We should do cartoons? Yes. A photo or cartoons? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. That's for the, that's for a different time. (laughs) We'll figure it out. But here's the gift I got you, my friend. Oh, a Beatles flip book. It's a Beatles flip book. From 1968 when they were all just about done with each other. Yeah. And I want you to know, like, first of all, it's sealed, which I I think should make you happy. No, open it, open it. Because there's, they had all the decades of the Beatles. Yeah. And I was like looking meticulously, they had a sample for each one. Yeah. And I was looking meticulously at each one. And I was like, no, that's the one I got to give to Mike. Because oh, that's great. what do you think could possibly be the animation that happens in there? Um, George it's a flip book. leaving <laughs> the studio. It's George just putting the guitar down and leaving. <laughs> Dude, that's, that'd be so funny. Yeah. Um. Well, this is my favorite era of the Beatles. Oh, awesome. Yeah, because they were all like late 20s totally. artist boys. And making like the greatest music of all time. Yeah, like White Album times. Oh, yeah. Like that. that is still... Isn't it crazy these are like 20-year-old boys that wrote like the greatest songs of all time? Yeah, dude. It's I like, didn't what do the shit. fuck, man? I didn't do shit worth shit. I was in my jacking times. off into a bag of Vaseline <laughs> that I t- put between the mattress. <laughs> On my 29th my birthday. <laughs> Catch me with my wife asleep in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, where's my bag? Where's my jack off? Where's bag? my jack bag? <laughs> my bag off. I'm about to bag off. <laughs> leave, me, leave me alone while I bag Honey, off. You, you, why don't you get out of the house for five seconds so I can bag off? <laughs> <laughs> you see my jack jack bag. Jack bag. <laughs> <laughs> hey baby you see my jack back okay so it was a little difficult for you to open but you got it yes and so now you're in and so i can't wait for you to flip it are you ready <laughs> thanks mike and that's the show <laughs> and that's the show thanks for watching guys Dynamic banter. <laughs> that was great <laughs> Good show, man. That worked exactly like I thought. So I'm going to flip it now. What you, well, first watch it for yourself and then describe what okay, you Okay, Kevin, give me some privacy. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I would have never expected that. In a that. million years. <laughs> in a million years. It's almost like the company that made it had no idea what they were doing. Dude, let me tell you something. First of all, I'm. I'm <laughs> Can you not wait to get super high and just stare at that? <laughs> First of all, I'll do this forever. Right? Second of all, I'm very torn as a creative professional right now. <laughs> Me too, man. When I. You just. Yeah. No, I mean, like. I don't. I almost just want the audience to hear me see it. And never know what it is. <laughs> never know Dude. What it is. That's. That's like elite level bonkery. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> now Kevin knows. <laughs> I need to see it again because I only saw it. I only saw it that one time. I need my fix. <laughs> Dude, dude, if you're listening to the podcast right now, I, if you're listening to the podcast right now, I need you to write it, tweet at us. Oh, what you think it is? What yeah. you think is happening? Oh, and then we'll reveal it in the next episode. Dude, tweet yeah. or comment under. Someone's gonna find it. Someone's just gonna YouTube search. That's the length you go to yeah. to to know what we're looking at. <laughs> Yeah, burn it. Just burn it. Burn it, and then let's go to the store and buy the rest of them and burn those. That's the sound of it flipping. That's the sound of it going away. It's gone completely That's away. That's the sound of the me- of the beast. Um, Great present. Isn't it great, dude? I got a lot of enjoyment out of that. <laughs> You're going to get endless future yes. enjoyment. This will be it. with me for a long time, and these pages will be worn thin. <laughs> it's going to be bent over. Like You have flip books that are bent over. Dude, that's the move, man. 
if you're going to do a flip book and you're going to spend money <laughs> to print all those pages, you have to do something like a vine that somebody would watch a thousand times. Oh yeah. That's such an important part of the flip book process. Yeah. You can't flip it once and be like, <laughs> yeah, that's not yeah. A good flip it's book. gotta be something real good. It has to be iconic. There. Um, did you see that? Uh, back when, <laughs> you okay, buddy? Yeah. You're right. That one was staged. You I had a good time. in the face with that thing. <laughs> Um, oh, we got a we had a pre roll on the show. I'll do it later. Did you sneak one in last week yeah. or whatever? That was great. I, I was did. listening back and I was like, "Thank you, Steve." Yeah, that's great. I think it's okay to do that because it's the same ad. Oh, it doesn't. They you don't. Know? As long as there's, I'll probably just do the same thing on this Dude, one. Yeah, that's a mm, eh, yeah, and that's an <laughs> mm, yeah, mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, uh, I guess we got to mention real quick that um because we're already kind of deep into the show and we'll jump in the, into the ads soon. But um, I did want to say that like, I, and again, like we'll, we'll keep this brief, but the Patreon is like, has been such an active place yeah. since we started it. Mm -hmm. And it's like bonkers. So like Mike and I shot like a little thank you thing for the patrons. Um, and, uh, and we shot like a really fun Q and a video that is like, like i don't know too long probably <laughs> it's an hour long I'm sorry Kevin. <laughs> but we took the questions really seriously yeah and answered them as seriously as we could you should say what's coming out today what is coming out today? which oh, is the titles video is this oh dude <laughs> so what do we say about it oh man um kevin had this great idea where we would listen back well we've been talking about it for a yeah. while we listen back to titles and see if we could differentiate between fake like if we titles, just remembered them. Yeah, 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 which we wouldn't for the most part. Right. But then we kind of—it's very interesting. I'm not going to say too much, but it's very interesting what happens in that yeah. video. How we find our way around that situation. Yeah, because we've always been like, you know, in the history roads, you guys will be like, in episode 112, John's blanket. <laughs> you guys like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, what? I remember that shit, and I don't remember calling an episode John's blanket. Right, but that's right. really funny. And so we just capitalized on uh, our bad memories. Yeah. And then you guys threw in some fake ones that you guys uh, provided Kevin. Right. And that video is out today. This, this, this is Friday. Yeah. And it's dude. Uh, real and fun. Telling you it was like a big endeavor to, to get like Kevin on board. And now that we have him on board, we're making like, um, we're doing shit every week and it's so fun, but just like super fucking fun stuff that we think that you guys would really enjoy that we really enjoy making as well. And it's very different from the show, but it still has the spirit of the show. Yeah. And it's just fun. It's just a fun thing it's, that you're allowing us to do with your patronage. Totally. So it's, thank you very it, much. It allows us to fuck around yeah. and, um, and it, and it makes us all really excited to do it. Yeah. And it gives us like an extra day of the week to do dynamic banter stuff. Whereas it was like one day a week, pretty much on top of like the post-production and the, you know, the, the, all the behind the scenes merch stuff and touring and whatever. But usually it's like one dedicated day a week for, for at least recording the show. Yes. And so having like an extra day is like really fun. It's like, not like this, you know, we're not just sitting in the studio. We're like going to my place. We've we're set like, in other places places yeah and it's like we're kind of like taking this we're expanding the universe a little bit yeah and uh, it's really fun to do that with you guys yes Don't be Will you just I kill so <laughs> isn't it great dude <laughs> really like, i just couldn't <laughs> I, dude, the other ones were like a kaleidoscope of all of them, like kind of animating in and out and stuff. Uh -huh. And then there was another also one. cool? Like cool. Yeah. They were all cool ones, but that one <laughs> was the most interesting. And, and it's so great that it happens to be your favorite era of the Beatles, yeah, I too. Love it. That's great. I love it. The Beatles, like you've never seen them before. <laughs> um, dude, really quickly before we get to the ads, I went to the pirate show and... I can't wait to do it with you guys. That's great. Because man, oh man. I feel like that needs its own episode. Dude, a, a billion yeah. percent. Yeah. Like us just recapping our experience at the show. <laughs> what did you think? Um, well, so I I had been I had been to medieval times like 
five or six times maybe in my whole life. Cool. So I like the show. I know what to expect. I know what it is. The pirate show is similar in the audience layout and the food serving portion. Everything else is different. (laughs) It's like a big giant pirate ship and there's water and then they literally do like an off Broadway (laughs) pirate show. So is there like a damsel there's singing there's a mermaid hell yeah there's they, a damsel there's a pirate the captain is there interspecies sex there's certainly a uh, a bit of a romance that happens between the mermaid and one of the pirate crew let me tell which you we right can now. only assume ends in them having weird animal sex yeah gross <laughs> while people are eating guys yeah, fucking gross. fish <laughs> erotic dog erotic fish all I could think of when he was carrying her away at the end of the show was like, where is that going to work? What happens next? Where I need to go to where they go. This scene, but five minutes from now. What is this happening? <laughs> Why can't we see it? They're just like in bed and they're like, okay. Yeah, I don't want to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Uh. <laughs> okay. And where is it that you do things when you normally had had do this? You know how <laughs> you live in the sea, and that's different. This isn't your first time, right? <laughs> where does it feel good when you do it? So I'm normally on a boat. So maybe I am not experienced normally enough. Normally I am breathing air. <laughs> Dude, um... <laughs> Uh, the show is great, and I don't want to tell you too much uh, okay. because I want it to be kind of like a really fresh experience for you. But, man, would I say it's worth it? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was my next question was how much are the tickets and was it worth that? Um, it was $60 per person. And this includes tip. But you got like it includes the tip. Yeah, you don't have to tip. Gratuity is included. Um, but it has like, <laughs> but they had like an appetizer, your full meal, and then a like a dessert slice of cake. Are we talking thing. like pirate jalapeno poppers? Or are we talking like pirate? Well, there food? was extra stuff you could order, like onion rings and like cheese sticks and stuff, and yeah. like uh, mozzarella sticks. Yeah. And we ordered these mozzarella sticks, and they were like flattened into cheese pancakes. Oh. Like they were like that thick, that like long, and like that thin. Yeah. And we were like, what the fuck happened to these? And then there would be one perfect one in there that was like a normal cheese stick. This is your one perfect one. Our, our, but our matey sat on those. Sorry about that, my mate. I must apologize for my matey. (laughs) (laughs) My sitting on the sticks. (laughs) But he like, uh, so yeah, it was like, the food was fine. It was like pork chops and mashed potatoes and like vegetables and stuff. Sure. Um, And then you could choose from like a chicken one and a vegetarian one. Like a wet, like a pirate wedding. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But man, it was like bonkers. It was stupid. And I would say, so no, it's not worth it. Not worth 60 But is it worth it if you have funny friends? (laughs) Probably. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. If you have funny friends that will not take it too seriously Who's going in there and being like upset with the show? <laughs> well, some people are going in there and they're really rooting for people and they're like really into the show. Uh huh. But I think it's the show's not for us. So it's like a, it's for little kids. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, but there's like they try to include the family element. Yes. So the girl pirate has like kind of a short thing on and her legs are and that's for curious moms that's for curious moms and tired horny dads did you ever read that book curious moms when you were a little kid i did and that's where i learned about lesbians curious mom in the yellow hat (laughs) yeah but i like uh i I had a good time and it was uh it was stupid Mm. but we have to go we absolutely have to go okay it's got to be a thing okay all right, well, I want to thank HeadGum, the sponsors, Monica from Friends. Mm, we, we don't talk about her enough. No, we don't. Um, and I want to thank Kevin oh, for being Kevin, here. Kevin, Kevin. What? God bless. And Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Leia. 
Leah. Ryan. And Ryan. Kevin. Kevin. You need to fill it with your cum. <laughs> that one gets me every time. Thank you, Kevin. My, me, oh, my, oh, me, me, oh, my, mo, oh, me, me, mommy, me, eeny, miny, mo, my undies. I thought they said don't read directly from the, <laughs> from the script. <laughs> they said make it your, your own, own <laughs> make it in your own words. Sorry, I'll, st- I'll <laughs> put it in my own words now. Guys, are, are people still trying to make plans with you this summer? Are they like, hey, Joey, let's go out to the lake and shoot crawdads with shotguns? <laughs> I don't think that that's how it's done. But... Chrissy, we're going to be mining for diamonds in East Africa. <laughs> are people always trying to get you to mine, to mine you for to crawdads? Mine. Honey, we're going to go shell looking in Puerto Rico. <laughs> I organized the trip. It's so a go shell. Local. We're gonna. It's gonna be a 16-hour flight. We're gonna have two hours to get shells, and then get back on the plane. Another 16 hours back home. That's where we'll look at them. Look at them. As if you aren't booked and busy already, you're just gonna have to tell them. Uh, try again in the fall. You've got pool days, pride parades, bachelor parties, and beach vacations waiting for you. It's a lot, but thankfully, me undies wants to help make this summer the most comfortable one you never forget. Because when you're living your best life, and you're living the things, Al, in life. Leah, Leah. The last thing you want to worry about is butt sweat. Leah, Leah. You're 100% right. You're 100% right, and not a day goes by where I don't think about that. And what a bummer it is to have butt sweat ruin your day. Maybe you're on a bus, and you get up from the bus, and no one else has gotten up yet, and you get up, and you're in a little pool of your own self. And no one wants that, do they? No one wants that, do they? No one wants to be in a pool of themselves. Because when you're comfy and feeling good, you're more present to enjoy all the summer plans. It's like science or something. And MeUndies has the lightest and most breathable fabrics to keep you cool and comfortable wherever you go. From undies, bralettes, socks to loungewear and swimwear, you can find something for all your plans. MeUndies also releases new prints all the time, like their limited edition Pride Collection. I'm wearing I Love You Pants. (laughs) Is that what you call your boxers? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They got little emojis that say I love you on them from MeUndies. Honey, you seen my I Love You Pants? You can match with your partner, friends, or even your dog. Find your ultimate summer comfort in sizes extra small to 4XL. And MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. If you're a first-time purchaser, you're going to get 15% off. Yeah. For a limited time, if you sign up, I think it's Leia. <laughs> if you sign up for their free to join me undies membership, you get twenty five percent off your first membership item, Michael. Okay. Why does your watch say it's ten twenty when it's twelve oh one, guys? For uh, and and if you and to get fifteen percent off your first order. <laughs> uh, And 25% off your first membership item and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Why don't you go to MeUndies.com slash banter. That's MeUndies.com slash banter. MeUndies, we love you. I love you. I trust you all around my goods. You're in there right now. You're in there. 
and you're I always feel in there. you up in me right now. Every day for the past eight years, you've been in there. I've been feeling you all around my bosoms, my boy bosoms, my boys of my boysums, <laughs> my boys and berries, my boys and berries. My boys berries. Guys, let's talk about Quip. Oh, uh, I love to keep it my teeth clean. Good health starts with good habits, and Quip makes it easy by delivering all the oral care essentials you need to care for your mouth. The Quip electric toothbrush is loved by over 7 million mouths and has timed sonic vibrations with 30 second pulses to guide a dentist recommended two minute clean. Ooh, I love being told what to do, especially when I got something in my mouth. A lightweight and sleek design for adults and kids with no wires or bulky charger to weigh you down. That was my George Carlin impression. Way you now. A multi-use travel cover that doubles as a mirror mount for less clutter and reusable handles in a range of sleek metal hues, including best-selling all black and all pink, as well as bright plastic colors sure to make a pop to your bathroom counter, huh? <laughs> <laughs> With stylish and affordable electric brushes starting at just $25, you won't be paying through the teeth for better oral health. So why don't you go to getquip.com slash banter right now. You're going to get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash banter. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash banter. Quip. The Good Habits Company. Oh boy, let's talk about Backbone. Dude, Backbone. Have we talked about Backbone? Let's talk Not about really. Backbone. I don't think we have. We talked a little bit capacity. about Backbone. Dude, they went above and beyond for us. They made sure we both had one. Yeah. I'm very excited about it, and thank you for going above and beyond and doing that. Dude, isn't it awesome? It's so awesome. It is awesome. It's literally a thing you put your uh, iPhone into, and it makes your iPhone like a gaming system that can tap into your Xbox, your PlayStation, your PC. Yeah. And it connects to the Xbox like Gamer Pass thing. Yeah. So you can play everything that's like in the Xbox Gamer Pass library. That's crazy. On your phone. Yeah. I tried it from my couch, which is where my Xbox is. I just want to see if it would work. And then I, I was playing Xbox right here. I was playing the show. And I just thought about how crazy that was that that was a possibility. Yeah. And then I thought about like being in hotel rooms across the country and not being near your stuff and like playing video games is a part of our like daily ritual Pretty to much. relax and it's such an important part and that ritual usually gets taken up by something else on the road but it doesn't have to now you could wake up and play your hour of video games or do it right before you go to sleep no matter where you are and uh, as long as you got an internet connection and it's like your home system on your phone and it's very crazy it's just like have you ever wanted to play like all the games you play on your consoles or pc like in your bed yes or like on the toilet or like in the bathtub being safe dude let's dude, say let's that say you're playing a game and you have to go to the toilet and you're but like, now, dude, you don't want to pause the game, dude. My boys need me in this raid. Yeah, yeah. And then you can and not you take, can a break. take a break. Well, guess you what? Bring, you're you're bring, bring, bring. Backbone is the newest game-changing essential that transforms your iPhone into a handheld console. Like we said, you simply plug in your iPhone to the Backbone and enjoy console quality controls. With responsive buttons and triggers, clickable analog sticks, and more as you play Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and App Store games. And I was playing Fortnite in my bed. That's fun. That's very fun. I want to so do it with a GTA. Oh, dude. I think because that's such a good chill out game. Absolutely. Dude, I love just turning on the radio and taking a drive. Why not? It's like it's like a de-stressor for this generation. And then once in a while, I hack an ATM. Big deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. What am yeah, I, a, yeah. A, a, some kind of criminal? Yeah, and if you don't own a console, guys, and you're like, I don't have a console, guess what? No problem. Stream hundreds of games like 
FIFA, Halo, Minecraft, and more through cloud gaming services like Xbox Game Pass, NVIDIA GeForce Now, and Google Stadia. And even if you already have a PlayStation, Xbox, or PC, play games you own with Remote Play or Steam Link app. Come on, guys. Experience for yourself what TechCrunch calls the closest we've ever seen to a portable Xbox. So go to playbackbone.com slash banter now to order your backbone until June 30th and get free access to over 350 console games and perks, including one month free of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, one month free of Apple Arcade, two months free of Google Stadia Pro, and three months free of Discord Nitro. How about all that? You're going to be enjoying the best of the best that the latest generation of consoles have to offer all on your phone how about that that's the future we want that's the future our parents walked so that we could run while playing Fortnite. so find your next adventure at playbackbone.com slash banter thank you backbone Last but not least, <laughs> you fell off low play. Hey, Mike, you know what that sound is? I know what you think it is, but what it actually is, is, oh, it's Shopify's new sale sound. And it's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business. So upstarts, startups, upsides, bing bongs, and slip slaps and established businesses alike can sell anywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility. Believe me, you, this podcast started out with nothing. <laughs> is that what it says? Then? And we're not stopping there. <laughs> Just try to stop us at nothing. Because you know what? Success is a million milestones on a forever evolving path of nothing. Does it really say no. this podcast started from nothing? Definitely not. Dude, I, that would be so fucking funny. But you, know what's great? <laughs> but you know what is great, Mike? That Shopify has the tools and resources that make it easy for anybody, any business to succeed from down the street to around the globe. So go to shopify.com slash banter, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. We're talking synchronizing online in-person sales. Reach customers online across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps. Gain insights as you grow more. More than it's more than a store guys shopify grows with you okay so grow your business with shopify today go to shopify.com slash banter right now you get that 14 day trial and get full access to shopify's entire suite of features shopify.com slash banter thank you shopify <laughs> Mike. Yeah. I think it's time for us to bring in our special guest. Okay. Is that I'll... okay for you to step the fuck out? Are you all right? If yeah, I I'm step totally the fuck fine. out, will you be all right? I'm totally fine. Um I have um I got a text here. I'll let him in. And he's in. So you can come right in Kevin when you let him in. Great. Guys, uh I'll tell you, John Hartwater is uh well here, let me pull up some facts here. He's one of the number he's one of the number one selling hot selling country artists of all time. He has 17 albums, 17 records. Two have nearly hit pa platinum. Yeah. 
Kevin's right. Kevin knows more about it than I do, so he'll be yelling out some stuff about it while we're here. But um, I'm really what's really exciting is is he has a song that he has released on his latest album called My Goddamn Truck. And on that album, there's a song. You're not going to believe this. It's called Memory Street. There he is. Hey, buddy. Look at you. Hey. What's up? Steven. What's up, John? Great to have you. Good to see you. Thank you. My name is, is James. Well, I'll call you. I see. The thing is, I called you James earlier. And Mike was like, don't you mean John? John Hartwater. I, I was listening from outside the dirt, and that oh, is not how us. it went down. I just was. I just wanted to call you John, uh, but I guess I'll call you James. What do I do here? Just put, put these in those. Things yeah, put those cans in, and uh, and we'll get you all started here, dude. Thank you so much for coming. So you you just came back from Nashville. I certainly did. Ooh, don't spill that. I just came back from Nashville, and boy, my arms tired. That's good, man. That's a little joke for the podcast because I know you guys are jokesters. So you just got back from Bonnaroo. Yes, that's correct. And so what? And did you play anything off the new album, My no, Goddamn Truck? I didn't. I didn't actually play at Bonnaroo. I just went as a patron. I I got the ticket and oh, I you was just there, there front to hang room. Out. I want to see Jack White. Oh, that's cool, man. You're a Jack White fan. I'm a Jack White fan. Who are some? Who Who do you like right now? Who are you listening to? I like Jack White. I like Kate. Um, yeah, Kate too, Bush. Man. Kate Bush, it's yeah, good. she's making a, a research. Do you watch Stranger Things? Yes, I certainly do. Oh wow, you know I I gotta be honest with you, man. And we talked about this. We've bonded a lot at at, at some events. You and I were uh, at some YouTube's events, That's and right. every time we see each other, it's always like real fun and nice. We give each other a big old hug. That's and, right. Um, so that's how we do. You always smell like tobacco and freedom. That's right. That's I got both things in my pocket. That's what I always say. That's I why know I made you do. my first album. One pocket of tobacco and one pocket of freedom. Yeah. One on, in the front and one in the back. And that was around the time when you were releasing that album, Fighting for Freedom. That's right. With the number four in and the middle. A lot of people said, my manager said it was crazy to release six albums in a year, but I said, watch me. Well, it's crazy that you have, I. this sounds insane. Mm. But you have 2,300 songs. <laughs> Catch my breath. <laughs> yeah, please. Take that's, a moment. That's actually 100% right. That's insane. Yeah, I'm prolific. I'll write a song right now. Oh. I walk downtown. And that could be something. <laughs> wow, walking downtown? Do you like yeah, man, I love it. So um, it's really cool to have you here on the show. But the biggest reason, dude, is like, you know, we tr- we tried to keep in contact during the pandemic. That's right. And we did a good job, didn't we? We had online game night. We did. Where me and you played uh, Yahtzee every night for a month. That was nice. And then we got you into Fortnite one night. And it just so happened that you upset some of the ladies in there. Oh, well. Um, and I was like, uh, you know, it, it was a little strange. We got, it, it was a rough time. That's what happens when there's a coyote in the hen house. <laughs> hey, that's what, and that's what they do say about you, buddy. And that's what this song is called. But James, wait, oh, okay. Coyote in the hen house. Coyote Let's hear in the hen house. It. Let's hear it. Coyote in the hen house. Did you just write that? I certainly did. Damn. 2,300 songs. 2,301. <laughs> hey, 2,301. Yeah, that sounds great. So listen, man. Um, the reason why we have you here um, is because you've got this new album, My Goddamn Truck, that you're releasing, which is really exciting. That's right. I hate that truck. Yeah. And um, it just, well, the last album was I Love My Truck. I used to love it. And Back it when sounds, that album came out, I was in love with the truck. Do you want to talk a little bit about what happened? Between well, the last album and this one? I got a flat tire in the truck. Back right. Ain't it? Ain't that the way it goes all the time? Yeah. And I don't know how to fix it. And now it's loud. Um, you've got a song on your new album called... Uh, truck Me- used to go fast, Steve. Yeah. 
Yeah. Fast. Zoom. Yeah, no, I saw it, man. I was I was worried about you for a while. It goes so fast. Now with the tired, not so fast. There's a song on the new album called I really want to talk about this because it's been it's it's been on my mind. I don't really like country music. We've talked about this. It's not offensive to you. Not at all. I don't uh, take offense. I have millions of fans. Yeah, and they do love what you do no matter what. And I and they're very good fans. Yes. Um, but uh, there's a song on the new album called My Wife, My God, and My Girlfriend. Now, can you tell me a little bit about that song? Same person. Okay. And that'll show you a little bit about how much I respect my wife. Okay, well, listen, we uh, we don't have too much time with you because, of course, That's we right. do have what you told me via text. Yes. And over the phone and in person many times. I told you I'd tell you three times. Anything worth telling someone is worth telling three times. Yeah, it is what you say. I learned a lot about that in my own life. And you definitely, uh, um, you've influenced me to think, to before I do anything, I think about it three times. <laughs> That's when I had that song. I said, say it three times. Say it. If you love yeah. me. If you love it, say it, say it three, it three times. times. If, if you, you love, if me. you love something, say it three times, and then yeah. then you set it free. Right. A lot of people leave that part. Um. So there. So let's get down to. I mean, everyone wants to know, I, and and I know you're a big fan, and I'm sure a lot of uh, of your fans are listening to this episode now, mm. which is really cool. I yeah. appreciate you coming to the I show. I told them not to, but they find a way. Okay. Um, so on your new album, uh, there's a song called Memory Street. Memory Street, named after the final segment of every single Dynamic Banter episode. And dude, it's an honor, first of all. And second of all, this has been like kind of a big year for Dynamic Banter. We were featured in a comic book called Bolero. That's awesome. Uh, I see it hanging on the wall. Yeah, it's right over, over here. there. From Image Comics. Yes. And, uh, and now we have... Essentially, an homage to the History Road segment on Dynamic Banter in a song you wrote yes. called Memory Street. Memory Street. And you said that you would perform it for us live here on the show today. I certainly would. And I'm so thankful for this. Uh, James, thank you so much for coming, man. You're such a cool guy. And ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you, off his new album, My Goddamn Truck, James Hartwater with... Memory Street. Memory Street. Sun on my feet. Shouldn't have taken my shoes off, cause now sun's on my feet. Gonna get burned like last time, and the sun on my feet. Last time I went to the beach, I didn't put no sun tan lotion on my sun on my feet. And that's just one of these memories on Memory Street. Memories on Memory Street. Dude, thank God this is here so I can do the last part of the song. Thank you so much. I mean, come on, man. And then that song, so this album, thank you. That is what it normally sounds like. And this song is about 15 different tracks, and each track there's a different memory that goes into the verse. You'll notice that was only one verse and a chorus. Yeah. And the whole goddamn truck album, none of it is about the truck except for two memories about the truck. There is one, another song on the album called Scary Nighttime. What's that one about? That was left over from a previous album. And the fans were saying, you got to put Scary Night Time on an actual album. And so I snuck it on the back. It's like a burnish track. I think I heard you perform Scary Night Time at a playlist. That's right. In Orlando, which that's, was a huge deal. That's 100% right, because I had a scary night the night before I wrote it. Really? That's right. And what had happened? What made you? What scared you so much that night? Well, there were uh, YouTubers in Healy's that were going about 40 miles an hour. Yeah into the elevator that yeah. me and my wife were in. Mm -hmm. One of those YouTubers, one on Healy's, one on a hoverboard, smashed directly into my wife. That kind of reminds me of the time I was dead looking and gone. through... Um, dead and gone. It was this exact trip. I was looking through the one of those uh, those things where you put a quarter in and you can see 
across the city. Binoculars. And I was looking at, well, the binoculars are the ones you wear around your neck. This Deer, was like a Deer founder. This was like a public one. And it was in it was in Orlando, and you could look across this bay and see all this stuff. And so yeah. I put in like a dollar, and I looked through it, and a bird flew right up to the wow, right up to the glass, and it scared the absolute shit out of me. Call that getting your money's worth. Um. So, dude, I want to thank you so much for coming here, thank man. You for this has been here. so special. Thank you for letting me do my art like that. And I I can't thank you enough. Thank you for all you do. Of course, man. And I'm a patron. I am pr- oh what you're a patron? That's right, dude. Come on, man. You make my heart so happy. I want to support Kevin. I met Kevin in 1996, and he said mm-hmm. I haven't eaten in so long. And so for him being a part of a Patreon, even just a year old, he knew that he needed to eat. He said and that's James, someone I need worth to supporting. Eat. He said James, I need to eat. And he wrote me a and letter, I never and he said it. he said Steve, James, I need to eat. He. Wrote you a letter from. <laughs> he said, Steve, Mike, James, I gotta eat. Steve, Mike, James, I gotta eat. Steve. Oh, people know this one. Mike, James, I gotta eat. Baby Kevin. Okay, so you're gonna um, before you leave, we gotta get your plugs in. You're going so next up, you're going to Buckfest. That's right, and that's in that's Memphis. That's Memphis. That's awesome, man. And you this 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 is like the fifteenth Buckfest you've 15th done. Fifteenth Buckfest that I have headlined. Yeah. So and basically the way it works is you pay a buck, you get a buck. You pay a buck, you bring a buck, you get a buck. And if you bring your buck, you get in for free. Biggest buck wins. And you and so what? Tell me about the biggest buck you ever seen. Biggest buck gets to headline the festival. What was that like? Thirty points. So I have a buck. It's actually two bucks taped, one on top. <laughs> and that's all. That's all. That's all. I've gotten a headline the past. No one's kind of pointed it out. So the past fifteen years, I've actually been able to headline, but because of my buck concoction. I had a nightmare about a deer, that and the horns were like this. Sounds like a scary scary night the horns were like this it, yeah. d- it was a little bit of my it was my scary night that's your scary that night. that was the same night where that seagull scared the shit out of me when i was looking through that telescope and we've all had a scary night that we could draw upon and that's kind of the inspiration for that song that's beautiful man well uh are any other tours or anything where, where are you gonna be uh, anything else you want to plug i gotta go home from los angeles i'll be going home yeah I got a plane ticket. Home. And so, and you, you said you're, uh, you've got your podcast every week called God don't vote. That's John. That's John Hartwell. Oh, it's a uh, shit, dude. Really? That's all right. He's a big God don't vote guy. Oh, okay. He, and that's what he's kind of resting his hat on three years ago. It was flat earth. And now he's like, I'm almost positive. God ain't cast a vote in years. Yeah. So he's kind of running an investigation. He put together a team to make sure that he checks all the records, yeah. local and national mm-hmm. elections. And he doesn't and vote. And he checks for God's name. He doesn't vote for anybody he else. He does not believe yeah. in it. Well, because he said voting's not in the Bible, so. He did say that. Out loud. On the local news. Um, he said, if God don't vote, then I don't vote. And it did get songified, and it did go kind of crazy on TikTok. Yeah. I heard they're turning it into a movie with Kirk Cameron. Is That's that That's 100% true? true. That's great. All right. Well, dude, thank James. Dude, you pleasure can, having you here, man. Do you mind if I leave my guitar in Mike's house? You can leave your guitar at Mike's house. <laughs> I think he'd like that. Guys, James Hartwater, ladies and gentlemen. James motherfucking Hartwater in the house. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. What a time. What an exclusive. And we just love having that boy in here. Of course, we'll probably, uh, we'll get him back in here someday. Um, But it's real special that he wrote a song uh, about History Road, kind of, as an homage to History Road. I think that's awesome. Um, All right, well, let's do some goddamn, uh, let's do some fucking History Roads. Uh, And then, you know, and then that's that. That's the end of the show. Hey, Mike. Whoa. Mike, how you doing, man? You missed a good guest. I heard it. I was, I was oh, listening. Oh, good. That was you? 
Yeah. Sound like you were crying. Yeah, I just get really emotional <laughs> when, when I hear that. Music, he yeah. plays guitar unlike anyone I've ever heard oh, play yeah, guitar. Oh yeah, it's great. And uh, you know, it's like the first time you hear James Taylor or the Happy Birthday song, and it touches you in a way. Mm-hmm. It's the first when time you, you ever hear the Chili's Happy Birthday song. It's like when you hear children sing Happy Birthday. History. <laughs> Mike, did you know that Tommy Lee Jones hated Jim Carrey? No. Why? Tommy Lee Jones from, uh, he was in batman two yeah 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 he was he was uh two faces he was both guys he was both face (laughs) he was the face brothers in batman forever returns he was two guys two guys batman's greatest (laughs) (laughs) he was just two guys standing next to each other (laughs) they're super pissed off Damn, one of Batman's greatest villains. He played both men in Batman. <laughs> and you know what, dude? In, remember both when man. he remember when he came? <laughs> that's the that's the wish ver, the wish.com version of Two Face is yeah, both men. Both men. <laughs> remember when uh two dudes came out to fight Batman and and it was a big reveal. Yeah. And at first you only see one dude. Because the whole movie you thought he was gonna be outnumbered and then that's all. And you think it's one dude the whole time. Yeah. And then he goes you know what's better than one dude, Batman? Two dudes. <laughs> and then the second guy comes out of the shadows and Batman's like, I'm going to fight these two dudes. <laughs> the second guy's not really into it. No, no. But it's two he dudes. He just points to the guy and goes, get over here. <laughs> but Tommy Lee Jones played two faces. Double faces. Double face. <laughs> double face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, and Jim Carrey played the Riddler. The Riddler. Yeah. In Batman, whatever, whatever that Batman was, forever, that forever maybe. That was the one with Seal. Or Batman and Robin, maybe. Batman is it forever? forever. And uh, apparently, Tommy Lee Jones hated Jim Carrey. Dude, that's yeah. so. Imagine. Here's how stupid acting is. By the way. There's a dude playing both faces, talking to a guy playing the Riddler to the best of his ability, being like, you're being too zany right now on this movie set yeah. where you're playing a cartoon character. I can't sanction your buffoonery. You're playing Two-Face in what is the most cartoonish cartoon Batman movie, in yeah. a long time. Get the fuck over yourself. Yeah. Get, somebody neuralize him. Isn't it kind of sad though when you like I, yeah, I've had this problem I never where know I'm anything about any actor. I know. Ever. For me, it's like I've done things where I'm just being myself and which could come off as like obnoxious yeah. or like too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you know me, you know that this is just what level I'm at at all times, pretty much. And yes. it's like not a never ending curse, pretty much. Yeah. But I use it to the best of my abilities for a product. If someone wants me to be energetic and fun and they hired me for that. I'll pay you 500 bucks to be energetic and fun. For and I'm like, I'm one. I'm there. Yeah. I, sure, why not? That's all I love to do. But then you like work with someone who's like not used to that. Yeah. And just wants, doesn't want that anywhere near them. Yeah. And then you got a problem. Dude. And then you're like, that's what I think is going on there. But then you're like, how much realistically does Tommy get paid to do that oh, movie. so much like millions like 10 I'm million sure. i'm so sure imagine yeah. maybe three million imagine getting paid three million dollars to just put up with somebody else for a month that's your hard life Dude, but that's the thing it's like you're getting paid at least that and more when you're leaving like those movies all that shit yeah. and then you get to a movie where you get like three million which might be a little less than what you're used to because it's a fucking ensemble cast mm-hmm. and the the leads are huge stars too and you're like, I'm better than this. Mm. And you're like, and I'm better than that. And I'm sure Jim Carrey was getting paid more. I'm sure of it. That was the height of Jim Carrey. No one is like, I'm not trying to be too mean to Tommy. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. 
but no one is like, you remember that fucking Batman movie with Tommy? And <laughs> yeah, would have been great fuck. if Jim Carrey wasn't in it. <laughs> Dude, everyone's like, that's the Jim Carrey movie. Yeah, exactly. I don't even remember who that exactly. Batman was. Exactly. And I don't give a shit. Well, that's what Norm's <laughs> saying there. He's like, it's probably like, you're the most famous guy in the room. And then Jim Carrey comes in and you're not anymore. And then, and then but what I'm saying is you get paid $3 million to fucking take the passenger seat oh, for a yeah. movie. And just be zany and do your best. Shut the fuck up. Oh, yeah, dude. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry um, every movie can't be that movie where you were um, in a sorority house with teenagers. <laughs> dude. <laughs> Sorry, bud. <laughs> you know, he was real good in Men in Black. Though. I thought he was great. And in uh, Wrongfully Accused or whatever that movie is. I thought he was great, but I know enough living here for 10 years now nine years whatever it's been i know enough hollywood people who have ruined their my perception of them by being a an asshole oh yeah to be like okay well now you're out yeah oh yeah, yeah totally i mean i understand if like if jim carrey while um method acting as the riddler mm -hmm. is like lighting your dressing room on fire every day because that's what the riddler would do and you got to be evacuated from your dressing room every day for a year. Right. Then I'm like, I don't want to talk to that guy in the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. But if you're just like turned up to 10 because you're beating the Riddler in a movie. Yeah, like how could he not be turning it up to 10? Like you'd think Tommy Lee Jones would understand in their line of work. Yeah. You're supposed to give your like absolute best performance in like everything you do. Yeah. And if you're the motherfucking Riddler, like you said, you got to be like, and you're Jim Carrey. You gotta be like, you gotta steal the show. Yeah, your job is to steal the show. And he did. And he did. And that's and that's why and Tommy that's, Lee is not remembered. That's a morning. And that's Hollywood, baby. <laughs> Connor Bergman sends a history void saying, "Dear Minsk and Stern." <laughs> okay. <laughs> what dimension is this person? <laughs> I've been a big fan of the pod since episode one, and I wanted to share with you guys another void. Shout out to Cooper Copycat. I don't remember what the podcast was because I'm a big old stoner, but the host was interviewing a guest, and suddenly the guest's audio cut out and disappeared. <laughs> the host immediately yelled, oh no, he's been sucked into the void. Oh no. <laughs> I couldn't help but think of the DBBBBB boys. You guys are the original funny boys. Thanks for always being there when I need a good laugh during my many depressive episodes these last couple of years. Connor. Our this, so it's not Connor, Connor from The Void. No, different Connor. Different Connor. Different dimension Connor. Cooper is The Void guy. Of course, we know that every time. <laughs> um, oh, here we go. Robin sends a history road saying, Medieval times, but Vikings. It's real. <laughs> Dude, we've never had an original idea on this one. Right? Hi, I've never actually been to Medieval Times, but the dinner and show I saw in St. Anthony, Newfoundland, Canada, when I was 12, when I was a 12-year-old girl guide, had to be just as good. So I had to tell you about it. St. Anthony is home to a giant Viking village, which looks very similar to a hobbit town, but with bigger boats. It's like a hobbit town with, with regular sized doors. Mm -hmm. And within the village is the great Viking feast. It was a small room in a cave that sat many, maybe 50 people. And all the staff were Vikings. My <laughs> server's name was Sven. Yes. All of us preteens were obsessed with him. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't hand out utensils, hands only. So that's medieval times. And then this pirate place was utensils. Yeah. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Um, and then halfway through the show, the Vikings come up and they steal your food. <laughs> <laughs> they eat your chicken. And kidnap your mom. <laughs> yeah. um. oh, no, no, no. Uh -oh. I tried to say that in the most fun way. Whoa, look at the entrance to this place. Whoa, cool. That's cool. Fuck. It looks like it's in a like, mole Like Europe or something. Oh, that's very cool. I want to go. Um, they didn't hand out utensils. You had to bang on the tables to get attention. <laughs> that's great. They served moose and home-baked home bread and sardines and other Viking-themed things. We have moose and bread. And chicken fingers for the unadventurous kids. <laughs> But where's the conflict, you ask? Well, it was a Viking trial. The servers would start off the night. Do you want a night. slate of dessert? <laughs> Whoa, what is that? It's just like a crudely cut piece of pie. Honestly, I'd eat the fuck out of that. Do you want an apple slate? <laughs> <laughs> apple slate? 
Schven, apple slay. You want honey tile? <laughs> honey tile. <laughs> we call this honey tile. It's honey frozen for years. What the fuck? Whoa! It's just been smashed with hands and these put onto a plate. These fish exploded in the microwave. <laughs> dude, that's that looks terrible. It's like, dude, but you know what? I'd still try it. I'd be like, <laughs> is this Viking shit? Let's go. Like, did the Vikings get salmonella? I don't even like fish, and I'd try it. Um, they the servers would start off the night by putting each other on the on the stand. Accusing other Vikings of murder and adultery, which I don't under which I didn't understand until years later. Then the groups in the audience would take their turn in Viking court. My guides accused each other of stealing snacks and being too loud on road trips. Duh. The other families I cannot remember because we spent most of our time focusing on Sven. <laughs> Who I actually met again later in life, but that's a story for another day. Whoa, did you bang Sven? He, she banged she Sven. She banged Sven! Who is the who did this? Robin. Robin. Yeah. Tinder. Dude, did Ro Robin please tell us if you banged Sven? Uh, this was in 2007, so other themed dinner and tournaments have been a thing for a while. You just gotta come to small town Canada to find them. That's great. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, never mind. I was like, is this wrong? Because she was 12 when she first met Sven. But if you've met Sven later... Also, we didn't make anything. this decision. We didn't make this decision. This has nothing to do with us. We're just reading the news. <laughs> um, You know, Jesse Stillwell sent something. Heard of him? And uh, he, he told me this, and I wanted to find it really quick, and then we'll end the show on this one. Is it $600,000? He sent us both $600,000 <laughs> and a cardboard cutout of Ryan Hiroki. <laughs> <laughs> from 2014. <laughs> That's so specific. Ryan, please cut in a photo of you from 2014. <laughs> just please. <sitting> just <laughs> awkwardly standing. <laughs> Jesse says, quick question. Hey, boys. <laughs> if you were given the opportunity to eat a piece of shit in order to never Jesse. have to shit again. <laughs> Jesse, dude. This is like stereotypical Jesse question. Would you do it? I'm very torn on this personally. Peace and love. Peace and love, Jesse. This is such a Jesse question. That is like maybe the most Jesse question. This is like the kind of shit he asks us when we're playing Fortnite. And yes. I'm like, I'm just trying to chill. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just play the game? Um, but I'll humor him. Uh, I like to shit. And yeah. I like being nice. able to shit. It's a break. And if there is a future, if there's a possibility that this afterlife people keep talking about, heaven, whatever, what have you, is a place that's like no pain, no bad stuff, like all good, then that probably means that you're not pooping up there, right? Or you only take good shit. Or they're only good clean sweeps. Yeah. No toilet paper in heaven. No, only one one square of toilet paper. Only one toilet Guaranteed. in heaven for How about this? <laughs> I'd eat a tur a full turd if 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 I could be guaranteed every poop for the rest of my life would be a one wiper. You would eat a full turd. Yeah. If if <laughs> like a hot dog on, bun, it would magically. <laughs> no, I just go, I just fucking go for it. If it meant I never, because you know, sometimes you guys sit in there and you're like, oh man. My, one of my favorite, I've said this before, but one of my favorite bits from Parks and Rec yeah. was Chris Pratt saying. When he's wiping his mouth. Yeah, he says it's like yeah. wiping a marker. And which which is why <laughs> tushy is so important. Yeah. You don't have that kind of stuff if you have a bidet. Um, but I'll tell you why I like to poop, and more than I don't. Uh -huh. Because <laughs> it's a good way to escape any situation it's first a, of all yeah it's a br i got a shit no one questions that. nope I you can go get out of a yep. parking ticket or oh, uh, dude, I uh, have traffic ticket i have you say you have to shit yep yeah no matter what you get the ticket for. and you can go anywhere and i mean i guess you could lie and be like you don't have to shit and hide your secret that yeah. you don't poop anymore uh-huh but i enjoy a good poop man Hmm. I enjoy a good poop too much to give it up forever. Yeah, it's a nice break. Although you can't you can't eliminate all the bad stuff in life because then you dull the best stuff in life. Well, but I think his his the fact that he's torn is because this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Pooping isn't a bad thing. If you poop, you're bad. It's an inconvenient <laughs> thing. If you poop, you're bad. 
There's no black or white. <laughs> That's it. There's no gray area. If you here. poop, consider yourself canceled. Done. Uh, but like everybody does it and uh, it's something relatable and it is inconvenient and sometimes it sucks. And I will say the, the end of your life, if you reach a, a ripe old age, makes the poop stuff a little more difficult and potentially undesirable. And that's a guarantee. And that's pretty much a guarantee. I think that's based on a lot of other factors. Of course. But if you live to the ripe old age, sometimes poop problems is the thing that just happens naturally. I think if you're eating processed foods every day until you're 80 years old, you're probably going to have a bad time. Sure. But, you know, they say that you kind of go backwards when you get old. It's like becoming a baby again. Someone's going to have to, like, take care of you, sort of. Sure. When you get to a certain age. So it's like if I had this magical thing where I never had to shit again, and I got to the old age where, like, no one had to worry about my shit and yeah. I didn't have to worry about my shit, that would be pretty cool. But I still like to shit too much and I'll take the chance. Shitting is a part of the human experience. It's just a part of the experience of being alive. You gotta shit. Where does your food go? Yeah. What happens? What, do you sweat it out or something? Or just magically goes to a... You pee it? You pee out your poop? Maybe you pee your poop. <laughs> I'm so happy that this show has matured with us. <laughs> it has. Yeah. We're not just that cum show anymore. Do you We're pee poop and poop show. out? <laughs> do you pee pee poop? Hit, Hit us up in the comments. Do you pee pee poop or do you poo poo pee pee? Let us know in the comments. Anyway, below. that'll be next week on Dynamic Banter. Um, Mike, you got any plugs, baby? Yeah, man. The next Surrounded show is July 1st. Please come to that. It's going to be such a good time. I'm going to be there. Steve's going to be there. Kevin Kevin's might. Gonna be there. Kevin Shannon's going to be there. Shannon's going to be there. The best, one of the best tattoo artists in the whole damn land. Um, I'm playing golf tomorrow. If you want to come. <laughs> open it, Mike, for anybody. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of things. So tonight I'm in. Uh, is it Temecula? I'm not pressing the right buttons. Tonight I'm in Solaris. Uh, beer and blending which is I believe a I'm, not, I'm floating around in a beer no it's one of those breweries someone's gonna throw a baseball at a target and you get dunked in a yeah be- in I'm a not, beer yeah <laughs> I'm not doing stand up I'm the guy in the tank you're getting dunked in a beer tank I'm getting all dunked out <laughs> um when's dude Wednesday the 6th I got a call from the uh the La Jolla Comedy Store. Ooh. And I'm going to go down there and do the show called Riff City. Whoa. Which is like a crowd work show, but there is a jazz band on stage. And I can't fucking wait oh for that to happen. Oh my God. So that is La Jolla Comedy Store on the 6th, Wednesday the 6th. July 6th. Um, I'm going to be in San Diego on the 7th. And so next Friday is the 29th. That's fucking awesome. I have a huge announcement that I've never made before. Not on this show. <laughs> Not on any show. Not on any show ever. And I would never. Never. Ever. You'd, you'd honor when you're supposed to mention it. I All I have to say is next uh, week there's a big announcement as far as shows go. And I can't wait to make that announcement for the first time. I can't wait to hear it for the first time. Um... I love this stuff we're doing with Kevin for the Patreon. So good. That's only going to keep getting better. Stupid good. Until we get old and we can't poop right. And Kevin will wipe us. Kevin will wipe us. Help he's already us. said. If you join a certain tier and we give Kevin <laughs> enough money, he'll wipe for us. $10, for just $10 a month, Kevin will wipe us. <laughs> but we need 10 people. We need you. <laughs> we need that you money. Help, help us wipe us. Please help us. <laughs> poop Trion. Please help us poop put stop pooping pee and pee poop and wipe us. Um what else? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Let us know what you think that flip book Listen is. to this and tell me what you think this is. <laughs> uh please do that. Please, please come to the surrounded show. Help keeping uh I need your help keeping that show a success and you've done such a great job turning out literally every other time we've had that show. So, so keep coming. I hope you enjoy it. It's always fucking different. Never know what's always fun too. Always good. Quite a few. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I'll see you then. And I can't wait to, to talk to you guys next week.
Guys, thank you so much. And thank you, Kevin, and everybody involved in the show. And uh, Lima, yeah. Lyman, Peem. Peem is there. Peem. Dude, they'd never be able to do that show without uh, This show, bu- without I'll tell burp. you right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Hit Dumb Podcast.